Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my final verdict on the new Rokinon slash Samyang. And this is from their new premium series. In this case, it is their special performance or SP. And this is a 14 millimeter F 2.4 lens. Now, if you haven't already taken a look at it, I would encourage you to watch my first look video where I look at the overall build and the breakdown of the handling of the lens. But after having used it for a little while, here are just some of my, my overall feedback comments. One thing I did notice is that I find that the uh, focus ring could be a little bit smoother. There's just a little bit of almost the feeling of drag that may be copy specific in this, but it almost feels like it's not as uh, mechanically, smoothly mechanically damped as it could be. Overall, it's a shame because it's a very nice focus ring as far as the, the overall texture, much like a Zeiss Otis where it has that rubberized texture, easy to find and you know easy enough to move, but not, with the perfect resistance that I would like to see there, a little heavier than what I would like to see overall. Other thing is, as far as a criticism of the build, is that I, I, I don't understand the logic behind building a premium series lens and not including weather sealing as a part of it. One of the things that Zeiss did when they moved to the new Milvis line, also their Batiste line, is that they made sure to include um, weather sealing as a part of the package. And so you've got this otherwise beautifully built lens. I mean, it's actually made out of an aluminum alloy. It is a, a build scale that is in many ways very close to a Zeiss. But particularly with a wide angle lens to not include weather sealing is to me a misstep in that this is a lens. If you're going to shoot landscapes, you're going to use it for shooting the night sky, um, often will be used for things like time lapses. You really need a lens that has some weather resistance because it might get wet along the way. And so that's a, kind of my one criticism. Beyond that, however, um, the build is beautiful and, and I love them having the full integrated electronic suite like a Zeiss lens, electronic aperture, all of those things make it a, a more user friendly in the real world type lens. And uh, one thing I will note, of course, this doesn't allow you to use traditional screw on filters. Um, by the way, I, I have been able to kind of jerry rig my um, my Wonder Pana system from Photodiox that um, will work on that and I wouldn't be surprised if they have an adapter for this lens in the future. The one thing when you get a fixed lens hood and a bulbous front element is you get these kind of uncomfortably sized caps that are hard to put into a pocket and so that is the biggest downside. Of course, I do own a lens like this in the Tamron 15 to 30 VC, but that is uh, kind of a drawback when it comes to that. On a positive note, I've had an issue at times with some of these type lens caps where they come off too easily. They've actually got a really smart clip system here that means that when that is locked in place, you don't have to worry about it coming off even if you're walking around with a harness or something. And I've had issues with some lenses where that big lens cap fell off and in the case of in one instance I was shooting a Zeiss Distagon 15 millimeter f2.8 the cap fell off and because it was metal and I was out on rocks you know it kind of got dented up a little bit which I wasn't thrilled about so this is a good system here it's not going to come off by accident the overall size of the lens I think is a nice sized lens um, you know it's not diminutive but at the same time it's small enough to bring along and uh, just balances well on cameras and beyond that, if you haven't already taken a look at my image quality segment, I really break down the image quality carefully there and look at all the different things. I will hit the highlights here and, and I will say that number one, this is an incredibly sharp lens, even at f2.4. And one thing that I note that is different from the f2.8 lens, which I own for quite a while, is that that sharpness goes right out to the very edges of the frame. The older lens uh, or existing f2.8 version lens I found was affected by some distortion stretching along the edges, whereas the resolution was fine, but it didn't look fine because of that distortion. Much less distortion with this lens, thus you're able to get a, a more flat plane of focus. And I found that I, that sharpness, even at f2.4, went right out to the edges. And as you stop down this lens further to more traditional um, you know, apertures for shooting landscapes, f5.6, f8, it is brilliantly sharp. And uh, that sharpness is very even across the frame. 
Optically, it is a very impressive lens and it will produce fantastic results for you. And so in real world shooting, I was really delighted with the look of images. I love with a wide angle lens when you, of course you have so much information in the frame, but to be able to zoom into a pixel level and to see fine detail rendered there, I love it. And, and so um, this lens is really tempting optically. I mentioned distortion. It does have some barrel distortion in it. And however, I was able to basically eliminate that distortion by just a manual adjustment of nine in Lightroom, which is a fairly small value. And so there's no, there's nothing complex about the distortion pattern. And so once there is a standard profile, I don't think that that will be too much of an issue. And of course, the advantage of having such a wide focal length is, is that even after some correction of distortion, you really don't lose much of the frame. You still get a lot of information there. And so overall, I was happy with that. Chromatic aberrations, very well controlled with this lens. CA is not a problem. And even at wide apertures, uh, there's not lateral CA. I'm not really seeing uh, much of an issue with, with longitudinal CA. It really does a great job. Then of course, of perhaps of paramount importance, or chromatic aberration correction is fantastic. In other words, when you're shooting the night sky, you're shooting the stars, this is one of the best, if not the best lens that I have seen for controlling coma. Now the 14 millimeter f2.8, that was already a strength for it, but uh, Rokin on Slamiang, they have taken it a step further and it's even better here. And of course that extra bit of light f2.4 versus f2.8, allows you to, uh, to make this just an even better lens for shooting the night sky. And so it really does an exceptional job there. And the only reason when I compared, uh, you know, kind of mentally side by side between it and the Tamron, the only reason why I think the Tamron would be equally good in some situations, even though there's a bit more coma on the, on the Tamron, is that it ha does a much better job of controlling vignette. And that is the one optical weakness that I found here. Vignette is quite heavy at wide apertures. And even at f5.6, it's not 100% corrected. And so, of course, again, at the moment, there's no profile for it in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. And so I'm, you know, I'm having to manually correct for it, which you can do, but it takes a lot of correction. And, and so that is the one optical weakness that you're going to discover. And so obviously this impacts you more if you have a body that does not allow you to push shadows very well. And so like, for example, shooting on a 5D Mark IV, and I've even used it on an adapter some on a Sony a7R II. Um, on those bodies that do quite a good job with shadow recovery, it's not really all that big of an impact. But if you are shooting with a body that kind of punishes you if you push shadows, that may be, be a concern for you. But overall, the optics are very, very positive. And so this is a manual focus only lens. Um, however, because it has the focus confirmation, um, it, and of course it has full electronics, it meters properly, there's no issues there. And you do have to manually focus it, but if you develop any kind of experience with wide angle manual focus lenses, there's really not a whole lot of focus involved unless you happen to be focusing down on a very close object. Most of the time you can kind of just set focus and um, you just kind of use a hyperfocal setting and everything's gonna be in focus all the time. And so you don't even really have to think about focus. But um, overall, this is a, not a challenging lens. If you're concerned about manual focus, it's not really a, a challenging lens to manual focus. Now, manual focus will be a, a drawback for some people. The other thing that I, has already been a challenge for some in terms of their feedback is the price. Now, the previous generation lens can often be had for under $400. And so it's always been a bargain and I've praised it as such for a long time. For those looking for a good quality wide angle lens but had limited budget, the previous generation lens is one that I've pushed a lot of people before. Now, I will say that in real world use, this is a much more user friendly lens. It is, it is vastly easier to use in every way um, in everyday use. I, I find it a joy to use actually overall. However, the price point has jumped to in the US market to $999, which means that in other markets, the price point is even more challenging to people. And so as a result, I think that Rokinon is facing, Sami Yang, they're facing that, that challenge of trying to develop premium lenses and testing the limits of what their brand allows in terms of pricing. And I don't know that it extends this far yet uh, for a lens like this. I have noted that already there uh, at B&H Photo just this last week, that it may still be running, there has been an instant um, rebate of 
$200 off the price. And so at $799, I think it's a great value. And you know, Sammy Yang may find that that's where their price point is for this lens and that's what the market will bear. And, and so that may become permanent. I don't know, or it could just be a temporary thing. But I do think that they'll probably move a lot more units at that price point compared to $999, which is getting up close enough to some other competitors that people may do some cross shopping. I will say, all of that aside, that I don't know that I've seen a wide angle lens yet that performs better than this lens when you consider all the different metrics involved. It's incredibly sharp. Um, distortion is well enough controlled that you can make it work. The only downside really is the vignette. It's a great night sky lens and if it didn't have the heavy vignette, it'd be even better, but it still prov provides great results. So overall, I have no problem giving this a recommendation, particularly if you can get it at that $799 price point. I think it's well worth your money. It's a beautifully built lens. It's going to hold up. I wish it was weather sealed, um, but beyond that, I, I think that it is, it's a, it's a great lens and I've enjoyed shooting with it. I like the images that I'm getting from it. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in my linkage down below description, you can find a linkage to my full written review, also to the image gallery, different images I've been shooting during this time. You can follow me there on social media, and of course, if you're really feeling generous today, you can make a, jo a donation. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Have a great day. <laughs>